Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for coming on this on this gray June Tuesday. Uh, what better time uh, to uh, come together and uh, investigate history a little bit? I'm Anthony Flint. I'm fellow and director of public affairs here at the Lincoln Institute of Land Policy, and it is my great pleasure to introduce today's lecture because today we'll be hearing about a very important man. Uh, in the story and the history of the Lincoln Institute, Henry George. And here's how the story goes. Just before the turn of the last century, an inventor and entrepreneur named John C. Lincoln, based in Cleveland, founded the Lincoln Electric Company with a capital investment of $200 uh, to make electric motors he had designed. The company went on to great things. Uh, Lincoln also famously invented a new welding process that was ultimately made portable and became instrumental in all manner of infrastructure and shipbuilding and construction and many other uses. John Lincoln thus became a very wealthy man, but he was no traditional industrialist and certainly no robber baron. With his brother James, he established progressive workplace policies that are studied to this day across the river at Harvard Business School. An employee advisory board, Lincoln Electric, uh, essentially a way of uh, a system for employee suggestions about how to run the company better. Full coverage for everyone under group life insurance, fair to say just about unheard of at the time. Training and a kind of continuing education school. Paid vacations, another first. And an employee stock ownership plan, yet another first in the nation. John C. Lincoln became interested in Henry George, whose influence had, of course, extended from New York to Cleveland and Ohio. He read Progress in Poverty and reflected on the themes of land ownership and taxation of his day. Perhaps because he was a man who made things, John C. Lincoln chafed at the idea that real estate speculators were collecting huge profits simply because they were often just lucky enough to have owned prime land. It was government action and public investment that created value for property owners, a windfall enjoyed by the wealthy elite who clearly did not share his principles related to equity and distribution. John Lincoln founded the Lincoln Foundation in 1946 and then the Lincoln Institute of Land Policy uh, began as a distinct organization fully funded by the foundation beginning in 1974. In 2006, the two organizations merged to form a single private operating foundation. And the idea all along was this, to explore the wild world of what we have come to call land policy, the use, regulation, and taxation of land including land economics, urban planning, and property rights. Today we believe land policy is underneath, if you will, so many of the challenges of the 21st century, from restoring municipal fiscal health in struggling cities such as Detroit to the issues of equity and sustainability in global urbanization. We study the land value tax and value capture as a tool for financing balanced urban development and infrastructure, and under the leadership of our new president, George McCarthy, we're placing new emphasis on the realities of implementation. And lo and behold, Henry George has bounced right back into the news recently with articles in The Economist and other publications heralding uh, some of these land-based financing ideas. Edward T. O'Donnell uh, is an associate professor of history at Holy Cross College in Worcester. He's written this terrific book, uh, Henry George and the Crisis of Inequality, Progress and Poverty in the Gilded Age, just out by Columbia University Press. He's also author of Ship Ablaze, The Tragedy of the Steamboat General Slocum, and co-author of the U.S. History College level textbook, Visions of America, A History of the United States. His scholarly articles have appeared in the Public Historian, Journal of Urban History, and the Journal of the Gilded Age and Progressive Era. Though steeped in history, he has embraced all things digital, clearly, uh, creating video history courses, and my personal favorite, establishing a blog on American history, inthepasslane.com. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Edward O'Donnell. 